How much sleep, Luke, do I actually need every night? Yes, seven hours, Pat. There's your optimum now. <laughs> Scientifically proven. So this is a great study, I think. So it was 500,000 adults, can you imagine, were measured uh, between the age of 38 and 73. And seven hours was the optimum. Now, what that means is if you get seven hours, the next day your cognition is pretty good, you know. And, of course, sleep deprivation is bad. Or too much sleep, they show, by the way. If, if you deviate from seven hours you're in trouble is, is the bottom line from this study in many ways but now we know especially if you're over the age of about 35 seven hours per night is the ideal number of hours to get now do we know what the science is what, why, what's happening in that seven hours that makes it ideal yeah well the, the key thing about sleep is you need to go into what's called slow wave sleep which is kind of a deep restorative type sleep you'll spend 25% of your total sleep cycle in that deep sleep pattern and seven hours gives you enough time to go into this really deep slow wave sleep and that seems to be the one that it certainly restores memory. Now, now, what was great was they imaged the brains of 40,000 people. Can you believe that as well? It's a huge number of people. And they noticed the ones who too much sleep or too little, their hippocampus was slightly smaller. There was a volume change. There's a physical measurement. Now, the hippocampus is where we lay down memories, you see. Yeah. So now you can see again if the sleep is not sufficient or too, too little or too, too much, your hippocampus is changing, you know. And that could be why, you know, there's a detrimental effect uh, through, through, through having, having too, too little or too much sleep, really. So we know there's a physical basis for this as well. And then people who do get a lot of sleep, uh, it turns out that maybe it's disturbed sleep and, and they still wake up tired even though they've had 10 hours sleep. Yeah, it's, it's so detailed, this study. It's remarkable. I mean, if you'd eight or nine hours sleep, that was negative, right? Now, the question is, why are you staying in bed for eight or nine hours? It could be because you got a bad night's sleep anyway and you were kind of tired, you know, and you stay in bed longer is the idea there. So maybe too, too much sleep is actually, you know, broken sleep effectively and then you're spending longer in bed to compensate for that lack of sleep during the night is one idea why, why too long is bad for you in a way. Now, I've often thought about uh, birds they you know once they've nested and had their fledglings off they go and then they just sleep in the trees somewhere at night and you're wondering the cats are out at night why aren't the cats killing all the birds and th they're not because you don't see the, the cats bringing in dead birds first thing in the morning yeah so how are the birds managing to survive? Well, again, this is another this kind of scientific conundrum in a way. Birds, dolphins and whales, half their brain stays awake is the idea. So in other words, they're, they're only half asleep. Even one eye is open, amazingly. And this makes sense because as you say, Pat, they're on the lookout for predators. It's very dangerous sleep. And one of the questions in biology is why do we sleep anyway? Because you're yeah. vulnerable, you know, because you're, you're, you're out cold and you might get attacked. Or whatever. But now those animals were shown to be half their brain stays awake to keep them alert, if you like. And the big question was, do humans does half the brain in humans yeah. stay awake and guess what just out all off the press it does it turns out that the left hand side of your brain is like your night watchman as it were and it's slightly awake when you're sleeping in other words your whole brain doesn't shut down if the left hand side stays slightly awake so we could be like like other ma like, like dolphins and whales yeah. and birds basically. so when you hear something shuffling downstairs an intruder might be in the house and you wonder, why did I wake up? I mean, it wasn't loud enough for me yeah. to hear it. Or a teenager coming home yeah. uh, from the party or whatever. And it turns out that you're not really fully asleep. You're not really asleep. But the study was a fascination. If you're in the same bed every night, the whole brain does fall asleep, interestingly. If you spend a night in a hotel or in a different environment, then the left-hand side stays awake. So you know you're in a kind of a more alien, potentially risky environment. And evolution then has made sure that you stay kind of half awake in that new environment. They show, by the way, in the study, Pat, that if you stay in that environment, that eventually night two, three, four, the whole brain falls asleep. Mm -hmm. So it seems to be as if it isn't a, it's a sort of a... a an alarm system, if you like, at the risk of danger yeah. is the way to think. I remember years ago staying in an apartment complex in Denmark and uh, at five in the morning, it was one of these old fashioned European buildings which had a square inside the apartment complex and all the glass was stored there. And then this truck came in at five in the morning and it emptied all the recyclable glass into the truck and the noise was horrendous. I heard it for the first night I don't remember hearing it the second now. or third. And I know it was done every day. There's the evidence. That. That's yeah. exactly the evidence. Your brain got used to sleeping in that room, you see, and then was fully asleep the next night and, and from then on, basically. You know? And one idea there, but is if you, if you sleep with someone and many people are partners, if you're away from your partner for that night, again, you're slightly more alert. 
because you know things are a bit different and sure enough the, the left hand side of your brain is, is still alert just in case something untoward happens mm. and, and the evidence if you, if, you, if, you, if you sound a noise in the right ear the left hand side of the brain lights up you see and vice versa that's how they tested it they got people who were asleep they, they sounded a noise and they noticed yeah. the left hand was still active if they were in a different environment so, so the evidence behind this is really strong Do we go into deeper sleep if we're sleeping with a partner? We uh, do yeah that's right exactly yeah, if you're fully comfortable obviously and you're fully relaxed and there's no danger and you're, you're familiar with your surroundings then you're going to get a good night's sleep and what they say in the study but this explains why the first night of your holidays very often you wake up the next day irritable <laughs> and the reason is because you've been, you haven't had a good night's sleep because you're yeah. in this different environment this explains this sort of unease yeah. if you like uh, after your first night away or whatever it might be Yeah I, I suppose there is that thing of sure I'll go to sleep she'll hear it anyway you know <laughs> <laughs> Yes <laughs> She'll take turns, the baseball yeah. bat from under the bed That's right, just to get something out. Well, I snoop. <laughs>